All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do today is kind of talk through the uh, SL5000 series front-loading beta machines and uh, try to give a just a quick rundown of how to clean them and what some of the parts are that you see in here when you pop the cover. And uh, note that there is a, normally a shield here with a, four, a few screws around it to take off so you can actually access all the mechanics on the top of the chassis. Um, I'd explained that in a video I had just made a minute ago, but it got deleted, so I'm going to try and <laughs> not ramble this time and uh, explain what some of this stuff is. Um, so anything, anyway, the first thing we've got here is the uh, cassette, the loading assembly, or an elevator assembly, or the, the cassette carriage under here. There's a couple different terms. I'll try not to get extremely technical, I guess, here. Um, but anyway, so your cassette would go in through the front slot here. Then it would actually move in and drop down onto the uh, supply and the take-up spindle here. And then what happens is your pinch roller and a few of your uh, guides on this, uh, what's called a threading ring, um, will actually go up into the bottom part of the cassette shell. And then this, the threading ring, will actually pull the tape all the way around the video drum and the, uh, ACE, the ACE assembly and the capstan and then pinch roller will meet the capstan here and then it'll it'll lock into position and then it's ready for playback. Um, now with these beta machines and a l most of Sony's beta machines, um, as soon as you put this the tape in, it will thread and it will stay threaded until you eject the tape. So fast wind, fast forward, or fa fast rewind, uh, full speed, blah, full speed, fast forward, full speed rewind, beta scan, all that stuff will, will take place with the, uh, with the tape threaded around the drum. And that's great in a way and not so great in another way. It's great in that you have very quick access to, uh, to picture functions and things like that. It's not so great because you're constantly wearing on heads as you, as you rewind movies you just watched. That's why it's highly recommended um, that you get a, a beta video rewinder. Um, to use to rewind your movies and things like that. It just saves head life and these heads aren't exactly on every corner store these days. So anyway, uh, that said, um, yeah, let's, let's take a look here. So anyway, so some key components, you've got, like I said, your supply spindle, your take up spindle, you have your video head drum and it has the video heads mounted on it. These little little chips here are your video heads. They're extremely, extremely delicate. And on these models, you'll have two. And uh, each head scans a, uh, a field of video, and the two fields make up a, a frame. And then you've got some stationary guides down here. You have a, an erase head. There's actually two erase heads. Um, you have your, your erase head here. It's your full track video erase head. Then you have an erase head down here, which can erase audio for like inserting audio. Um, and then you have an audio and control head uh, just to the right of it, just past the erase head. Um, and what your audio head does, of course, we're talking non-hi-fi, these machines, not until the 5200 came out, these it was their hi-fi stereo. Um, but these are linear mono machines. I believe the audio track is on the top edge of the tape. Um, but anyway, um, so your audio playback and record head here and then right here this polished shaft is actually your um, your capstan your c-a-p-s-t-a-n um, and there's a flywheel beneath that and that's your capstan motor here and the capstan motor drives the capstan flywheel and drives the capstan shaft which is what your uh, videotape that, that's what keeps the precision speed uh, of the tape so these these motors just take up the slack and wind and, and uh, fast forward and rewind um, this is what actually um, maintains the, the constant, precise speed of the tape as it pulls it past all the heads. So, um, some other things. Um, first off, never touch any of these screws unless you have the proper equipment to put them back where they belong. They are very, very... Uh, they're set at the factory. They, they rarely, if ever, would go out of adjustment. Um, I've really never seen a problem with them unless somebody has come in here and not knowing what they're doing and mess with them. And that's not a good thing. Um, very hard to get back sometimes to where they were. Um, and you'll spend all day pulling your hair out. So don't touch those. 
Um, so up here, there's actually two of these. You have a little coil here, and that's your tape uh, end sensor. And there's one here, and there's one here. And the tape comes out of the cassette, and it goes right past the, the first sensor. And then as it, th as it winds around the threading ring and goes back into the cassette, it passes right in front of the other end sensor. Now for VHS, you may notice that the, there's leader tape at the front and end of the spool of tape. And it's clear. Um, VHS uses an optical uh, end system, an optical system to sense the the end of the tape spools. Um, with beta, there's a metallic leader, um, which so there's an oscillation going on here. And when it when metal passes in front of it, it actually um, disrupts that oscillation, and a circuit detects that and shuts the machine off and puts it in stop mode. Fun fact. Um, so what else? So there are guides on the threading ring assembly, and these are actually roller guides. So it's a good idea to, to keep these clean. And let me see if I can focus better on that. And uh, make sure that they spin really, really nice and free. Um, if they don't, they're either dirty or the little white caps you can actually, uh, it's just pressed on there. You can actually turn them um, so, they, so they run free or they spin nice and free. They shouldn't really have any up and down movement though. Just note that. Um, another thing, so as the tape comes out of the cartridge or out of the cassette, it goes around this here tension assembly. And you can see as I move this tension assembly, if I can show it, uh, see back behind it, it's actually tightening a, uh, a band with some felt around the uh, supply spindle. That's actually your back tension. Um, that's the tension that's kept on the supply reel to keep the tape uh, firmly seated in the guide grooves and, uh, and against the video and audio heads and everything. So um, I've noticed that on some machines, especially machines that have been in a smoking environment, that if you put a tape in, um, and this, this is especially true for Sanyo Beta cords that I've worked on a few times, um, if this guide gets dirty, it'll squeal like crazy. Um, so make sure that's nice and clean. Um, I haven't really seen the back tension adjustment go out of out of adjustment. You shouldn't really have to mess with that. Um, I won't get into how you can tell if it's off. Um, it's not really per pertinent to this video. Um, and the only really, really, it's the only proven way to see if it's exactly correct is with a torque cassette, and they can be hard to find. I do have them, but... Um, that's neither here nor there for this video. But anyway, um, I wouldn't touch the adjustment. There's a there's a proper method to do it, and it, it rarely goes out of whack. Normally the, the felt actually is what I think ages and gets stiff, and that'll throw the back tension off sometimes. But I don't really see it happen too often, especially in these models. Um, anyway, what's out? what else? So another thing to note, back here, um, there's this little, there's this little arm here. And when the pinch roller engages, what this does is uh, when we put it in play mode, you'll actually see this kind of move over and it'll rest just very delicately along the, uh, the, the tensioned tape surface. And what this is there to do is if, say, your, um, say your take-up reel stops rotating, like if your belt goes south or you got a bad idler wheel or something like that or it can't take up the slack, if the tape slackens up for any reason, that um, that arm will drop in and activate a, a magnetic reed switch here, and it'll actually shut the machine down because it senses there's a problem and the tape is spilling inside the machine. So it's kind of like a little safety feature. Um, but in that case, the machine would, I believe these go into a shutdown mode, and you'll have to turn it off and turn it back on. Uh, but if that happens, you may want to check it out because you might have a problem with, uh, with tape spilling in the machine, and you wouldn't want to get it eaten. Um, but anyway, hey, let's let's shut up for a second, and I'm going to put a tape in this machine. So we turn it on, and this one needs a little help. It it does need new uh, belts and idlers and things like that installed in it, but it does play pretty well for what it is. So I'm going to help out the mechanism down here and get the tape threaded. What you're going to see, of course, is it's going to pull the tape all the way around the drum. Um, and when it gets to the end of its threading, um, the telltale sign with these that everything is kind of A-OK -okay in the threading department is you'll hear a nice big click when it latches in to the final uh, seated position here.
there we go. There's two clicks actually. Um, so now we're threaded. So you can see that the uh, the tape comes out of the supply side of the cassette and it goes across this guide here and then it goes around the tension arm and in front of this full track erase head which erases your, your video signal and I guess it would also erase your audio and control track too and then it'll go around the video drum and then across the other erase head for audio and the, the uh, control and audio head and then it goes between the pinch roller here and the capstan there's a, another guide down here and it comes back around and then goes all the way around past the final end sensor and into the tape again. So, let me see if I can hit play. All right, so the machine's playing. You can very carefully actually hear when you start up a tape, you can hear the uh, video drum actually sync up and lock to the control track on the tape, um, which is just a sound you get to use to, I guess, when you're working on these all the time. As you can see, so the tape is moving, the video head is scanning across the tape. It actually scans from the top of the tape to the bottom of the tape uh, diagonally with a helical scan system, just like just like VHS also uses. Um, so we got the tape that's coming around. We've got that little safety sensor here, which is taut, and you can actually see if I move that in, say the tape were to slacken up, it'll shut down. So that would sense a, a tape, uh, a fault, and I don't know, these might actually start right back up if I press play. Yeah, see these don't care. The later models I believe will shut down completely and turn off the power um, because they have a, a soft switch for the power so they can actually turn themselves off, these can't. Um, but anyway, so that's a working machine and the typical sounds you should hear when it works. Now I'm going to eject it and we'll talk about some of the cleaning procedures. Finally, let's stop and then we're gonna eject it. You can hear how sluggish and noisy that is because of the belts and everything being bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, so these earlier betas, um, I don't know about the earliest uh, the earliest machines, I imagine they're they're very similar in in drum design, um, but these the larger uh, early front loading and the top loading machines like the 5400, 5600, 5800, they all use these three piece drum designs, and I really like them. Um, they can be kind of a pain to align properly if you have to replace a video head disc. Um, however, they don't suffer from the stiction issues that the later drums have. Um, which is another reason to get a rewinder, um, because if you wear down the surface of this drum, the tape starts to stick to it, but it sticks and unsticks at a super kind of a high frequency and um, can actually cause issues with, um, I guess it happens more along the lines of how these real motors work. Um, eh, let's not get into that. Anyway, this is an early drum design. It's a three piece design. Um, and I actually have one. Uh, pulled from a machine. So this is a three-piece uh, video drum from a 5000 series beta. I think this was an SL5000 drum. Um, it's got a busted head on it, so it's kind of kind of worthless. I just have it for parts. So here's your, your direct drive motor on the bottom and your connections for the, uh, the transformer to actually get your video signal out of the head. And then there's a, uh, I believe this is for the uh, drum servo um, or the, the power to the motor and uh, probably a feedback line or something so it knows it's so it can regulate its speed um, anyway so we'll talk about cleaning with this since it's a lot uh, bigger and easier to show so these head discs these these chips in here these these are extremely delicate um, and you for sure uh, do not want to uh, you don't want to break these. <laughs> these these discs are getting extremely hard to find and in order to replace a disc on a three-piece drum like this you need an eccentricity gauge to make sure that is perfectly centered. Um, I think it's within... oh my god I don't even remember the spec anymore but I've done a couple of them. Um, it's very finicky and you have to have the special tool and you can see that this one isn't even... <laughs> this one's not even tight. It actually It's actually moving around a little bit 
Anyway, it's a piece of parts junk. So anyway, um, when you're cleaning video heads in any format, it doesn't matter if it's VHS or beta, um, these, don't, don't use those. Um, you can actually, the cotton, uh, pieces of cotton can actually get caught in these tiny little windings and, and rip these heads clear off and you, you don't want, that, that's a bad day. Um, if you can find them, what I would recommend getting are some of these old Chemtronics, uh, these little VCR head cleaners with these little chamois tips. And then what I would get from the pharmacy, um, if the pharmacy even has this, is 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. But in a pinch, 91 will work, and you can get 91 at the pharmacy. But anyway, so what you would do is you would, you know, wet the tip here in alcohol. And then the idea is to hold it kind of like this. Um, do not apply too much downward pressure. You know, just a little bit of, the, of a spring. Uh, there's just a tiny little bit of, of pressure here. And then you would use your hand with the machine off to rotate to, you know, rotate the, the head past the, the tip. So you're basically doing this, you know, just for a couple of revolutions. Don't go the opposite direction. You don't want to push the chamois into the head. That, that would be very bad. Um, always go, you know, side to side or, well, one direction. Um, never go up and down because if you break, you know, that they're just so delicate, you can break one off very easily. Um, but that's how I clean video heads. If, if you're not able to find uh, these little guys, you can actually take uh, I've used just a piece of uh, a piece of printer paper um, will work, and just make a little strip of it, you know, uh, fold it over um, into a little U shape, and and you know, and uh, bend it. Let me see if I can do it here. I'll just make one. <laughs> it's going to be very, very crude. But I would take a piece of paper and fold it over like this. And then just very, just moisten this with the, the alcohol, the isopropyl. And then do the exact same thing. Um, you know, take it like that with the folded end like that. And you can very, very gently, uh, very, very gently, um, just apply a little bit of pressure um, with your with your thumb, or you know whatever finger will work, <laughs> and then just move it, you know, very carefully under it. Do not move it up and down. Be very, very careful. And for very dirty heads, um, you'll actually see uh, like a little black line as the head goes by it'll just leave a little trace of black you shouldn't have to do it uh, for very many revolutions it only really takes a few normally they don't collect too much gunk um, but i guess they can so just remember to be extremely careful and uh you should be fine and there are other videos i think online with uh, people showing the same kind of thing so i'm actually going to clean this one since i've got it open And when I do this, I mean, I'm really trying to, I'm just moistening it. I'm not, I don't want to drip alcohol into, you know, every little nook and cranny on the head. You can see I've already cleaned a head with this. It's already dirty, so I'm going to use the opposite side here. It would help if I would uh, show how I'm doing this, huh? So anyway, I'm just going to take it just like this. Go in the same direction, away from the chamois. There you go. Now look at that. Pretty freaking dirty, actually. <laughs> and it had a perfect picture. So I'm going to give that just a little bit more of a cleaning. Ooh. Anyway, I'm sure there are other methods to doing it, um, but they're all pretty much the same, uh, same goal in the end. And then I will actually use the old cotton swabs on the audio heads and the capstan and things like that. And for those, um, I still wouldn't go up and down. 
um, and they're actually kind of hard to get to, so you really can't put too much pressure on them. Um, but I just go back and forth. Let me refocus this. So I just go back and forth a little bit, up and down the head slowly, kind of like a zigzag pattern. Not much on there. Go over to the audio and control head, do the same thing. Not applying much pressure, just back and forth. Keeping my hands, of course, away from the video heads. I actually, if I'm working where there's a, a head, I will actually turn it. <laughs> so there's no chance of me bumping it. Um, there's a stationary guide there. The guides you can be a little more liberal with going up and down, just not, not the heads. There's a guide under here. The capstans are actually what are extremely hard to clean on some of these machines because you can't get to the entire thing. Um, but just try and, you know, do the best you can. You may have to actually start the machine and wind it up for a second and then shut it off and take a tape back out so you can actually get the capstan to rotate to a new position. When I do them, um, I'll actually have the bottom off the machine and as I'm working this, I'll have my finger on the flywheel and I'll just slowly rotate it so I can get to the whole uh, the whole surface of that capstan. And then these roller guides here, um, it's kind of hard to show with one hand, but same thing. Just kind of go around. I, I like to take one finger and hold them still and then just kind of rotate them around as you work on them. Nothing too crazy. A eh, little bit of crap on there. Um, your race head up front. Once again, <laughs> it's really hard to actually get in here and clean a lot of this stuff because there's so much going on. One thing I love about these machines is, you know, they're kind of antiquated junk by today's standards, I guess. But uh, they're just fascinating how they work, and I, I think they, I don't think they get the credit they deserve anymore. The fact that they work in the first place is amazing to me. I guess that's why I have 30 of these darn machines and <laughs> and the cameras and everything else. But anyway, I'm, I'm actually right-handed, so I'm not doing the best job, but I get the idea. Just don't apply too much pressure. You don't want to throw anything out of alignment. Easy does it. And for this here, once again, just to get the make sure that the the groove that the tape rides in along the head drum is nice and clean. And this is where you have to be very careful. Um, and this is where I, I actually grip the top of the head drum and keep the heads out of the way so I don't accidentally grab one and break it. Um, this is going to be kind of hard to show, but I just kind of... Uh, apply a little bit more pressure because we're not going over the heads and just kind of work our way around down on the grooves and everything and make sure we're nice and clean keeping the you know rotating it to keep the heads out of our way so we don't catch them not overly saturated with the swab or anything. Be very careful. There's little very delicate plastic plastic spring-loaded guides on this side. Got to be very careful with that. Anyway, so on and so forth. Um, now the pinch roller, if you have to take the pinch roller off, um, you can actually shut off the machine on these 5000s. And there's a little wheel over here that you can rotate and you can actually wind it by hand into like a partially threaded mode. I'm just gonna bring the roller back to here so it's easy to access. Okay. Now you see how this, there's got a flat part. Take note of that because that flat spot needs to face the, uh, the drum. But this is just pressed on. So if you had to change your pinch roller or you have to clean it, what I like to do is you just grab a hold of this plastic piece and just you have to break it free after 40 years and just 
work it back and forth and pull it up very carefully. You don't want to break anything. Man, that's a tight one. Oh, man. Oh, and eventually it will pop off. So there's your piece there. And here's your roller. Now with the rollers, you're going to notice that they'll start to develop this kind of like a sheen where the tape runs across. Um, it'll Eventually it'll get hard and gross and you'll have to replace it and they're getting harder to find. Um, but what I do is take a little, uh, you can get like, uh, oh, where is it? This is an old bottle of it, if they even still make it. Uh, Ron makes it. It's called Regrip. You can use this. Um, and, and there's directions on it. Um, like a rubber cleaner. You're basically just cleaning. It's just rubber. You're cleaning it. Um, I don't like to use uh, this isopropyl alcohol on rubber parts. I think it dries them out. Um, that's my opinion. I, I may be wrong. I may be right. I don't know. Um, but what I'll actually do with these is um, clean them up with a with a cotton swab you know make sure they're all nice and nice and uh, matte finish again and that sheen is gone and then whoa drop them back in <laughs> literally and then drop them back down and uh and you know push this back down on there there you go let me clean that up and i'll show you what they look like when i get done with them well it's Probably not the best example because it doesn't even really look that different. You can still kind of see the sheen there. It is kind of still drying. I just use 409 on these. Um, some things call for some something more aggressive. I think what I have is actually uh, called RC88 uh, rubber cleaner. It's for when I was doing pinball machines. Um, I picked up a bottle of it. Super harsh, but it takes the grossness right off of rubber. But I don't think this machine was actually used that much because uh, the rubber's actually in pretty good shape, um, aside from maybe some of the idlers which are causing the threading issue. But we'll address that in the near future. I'm going to put this guy back on there, make sure our flat side is facing the drum here. And I think we're good to go. So that pretty much covers, I mean, a lot of the cleaning, it's not that hard. You just have to be careful and kind of take your time and uh, try and get your hands down into these little areas. Um, and now that I'm thinking about this, I forgot to clean the uh, tension assembly here. Oop, yep. Would help if I loaded this back into the original position here. really not dirty. There's very little wear on this VCR. Certainly a keeper. It's hard to buy a VCR like this that's from 19, you know, 81 or so that you can really see what the innards look like. I've seen some pretty disgusting VCRs that still worked somehow. Eh, not the best cleaning, but I don't want to block my block your view with my hand so I'm just gonna clean this clean this little safety tension assembly here call it a day so good luck <laughs> be very careful and of course my disclaimer if you break a head off or destroy your machine it ain't my fault have a good one